news. PPX TV réseau. A tout réseau lio interconnecté à travers mon plan. News. PPX TV réseau. Yo équipe reporter, présentateur, on est qui mounioye, plan avec vision yo pour communauté. Yon seul réseau, yon seul équipe. PPX TV réseau. Référence. Madame, Monsieur, nous prenons suivre en direct sur BPX TV Réseau. Sonny Bernan Femme Gauthier Bernan, nous dans la rue pour nous porter bar ou la caillou. Tout gros événement qui a passé dans la communauté, que ce soit politique, musique, culture, le football, eh bien, nous toujours là. Il y a une grosse conférence de presse qui prévoit la fête par ensemble des leaders dans la communauté. Parmi là, il y a Malen Bastien, Gypsy Metelis, Metsur, Kassandra Timothée, Daniel Ajan. Tony Jantenor et la trier donc pour jeter une conférence de presse. Côté, il va parler avec la communauté, il va parler avec les médias, il va parler avec le gouvernement américain sous crise qui vient en Haïti. Il va avoir un message très clair. Donc, il va inviter nous toutes là, presse là, toute population qui est pour venir, pour capable assister à la conférence de presse. Côté, il va avoir un message très clair. Restez là parce que BP Active Réseau, nous déjà sur place pour nous porter la carte au barreau, dans le téléphone, dans la télévision. Gros conférence de presse qui va le faire non, c'est en tout coup. BPS Super Tour et Cousse Planet. Marié indépendance États-Unis avec indépendance en Vessia. Qui se bat au Royal Caribbean. Vous menez nous prendre. Il y a une bonne vacances pour la mer. Sorti 4 juillet. Pour arriver 8 juillet 2024. C'est droit pour la mer. Les gounières pour les abattements. 786, 642, 35, 36. 786, 393, 26, 75. Pas de meilleure façon pour célébrer le week-end indépendance là. Donc, monter bateau indépendance en Vessia. 5 jours de croix guerre dans les Caraïbes. Pour indépendance des États-Unis d'Amérique. Qui dit mieux? Animation musicale, Freddy Tovay, DJ Dou, Aubry Blague, Maître de cérémonie, Sony, Belle en forme. Ça, avions belle vacances. Bien coup près devant. Fais réservation. 4 juillet au 8 juillet. Tête roi pour la bague royale. Caribéen, Kouzla. Pour information et réservation, BPS Super Tour, 786, 642, 35, 35. Kouzla 9, 786, 393, 26, 75. Marché pressé pour bateau à part. Quittez nous. Fini join nous. Avec BPS Super Tour et Kouzla. Le haut besoin de vendre un caillou, c'est pas courir les n'importe agents real estate pour vendre caillou dans condition as is. Qui donc, ça ou est assez ça? Non, de préférence, réparer caillou avant ou vendre ni pour faire plus comme. Si vous besoin de prêter 10 000, 15 000, 20 000 dollars pour faire réparation, prenez Léo Wilti dans 786 306 0390. Léo Paul Evaris a prêté ton comme pour réparer caillou là et vendre ni pour vous. La charge seulement 2%. Prenez 786 306 0390. 90. PBX, TV Réseau, c'est lui-même. Pas rien, l'auto positionné à ou ses yeux ou ses oreilles communauté à et c'est vous-même pour qui éduquer, c'est vous-même pour qui faire reconnaître ça qui a passé. Qu'un bébé ferme, qu'un bébé travaille là, continuez, qu'un bébé la balague. Hapsi, Florida Rising, and other organizations that we will, HADC, the Haitian American Democratic Caucus, and a number of other organizations who will be here and to express their sentiments around what has been happening over the last few days. And as many of you have seen, there are more than 15,000 people who've had to flee their homes and are living unsheltered in makeshift camps across the metropolitan Paul region in the last few days. And criminal organizations have taken over in such a way that civilians, many civilians, innocent children, their mothers, their fathers, whole entire families have been displaced 
homes have been destroyed. And conditions over the last few days are not anything that we're not aware about, but they've deteriorated to a point where now there must be a call for solidarity. It is not just about the Haitian people, it is about security for all people. And so if we are to come together, we can't come together alone, we must also rely on our allies. But before we continue, I want to welcome the executive director of Family Action Network Movement in Action, FUM in Action, Marlene Bastien. Gypsy Mitelus, uh, the representatives from Haitian American Democratic Club of Dade, Haitian American Democratic Club of Broward, Flick, and VAU, and of course Florida Rising as well, if you could please come to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonsoir tout le monde, comment nous y Today is a very sad day in the history of our nation. That is why you see that I'm wearing black. I'm wearing black for a reason. I'd like to put what's going on in Haiti right now in a contextual framework for you. Haiti is now led by an Ill illegitimate Prime Minister, Ariel Henry. Henry was neither named nor confirmed as required by the Haitian Constitution. Under his leadership, Haiti has not had a single elected official in office for over a year. Haiti has not had a president in two and a half years. Henry's illegal term as Prime Minister is the longest term since the creation of the current Haitian constitution in 1987. The last parliament vote in Haiti took place in 2019. Today's lack of official in office is a result of the refusal of the governments dominated by the PHTK to hold elections that are fair and free. Since the PHTK assumed power in 2011 through violent manipulation of elections and support from the U.S. and the core group, Haiti has not had one single transfer of power from an elected president to another. Let that sink for a moment. For over half the time, Parliament has been unable to conduct votes because too many seats were unfilled. The United States has provided persistent support to the PHTK governments. They've provided financial support, diplomatic support, dime playing or denying reports of corruption and oppression, insisting that Ariel Henry and his PHTK government are essential for Haiti's future. Meanwhile, the PHTK governments, including the current government, have caused the current gang violence through passive and active support. Active supports to the gangs include collaboration by top government officials and police officers with gangs to attack political opponents. Over 20 top officials of the Ashika government, including the former president and three former prime ministers, have been sanctioned by the US, Canada, and the core group, and yet none has been arrested. Passive gang supports include dismantling Haiti's system, judicial system, and supporting the gangs, the gangs by any means necessary. This also includes not sending reinforcement of police when gang attacks are taking place. As an example, on February, on Friday, March 1st, officers in Bon Repos, for those of you who've been following the news, pleaded, I repeat, pleaded for reinforcement while the community was under attack. No reinforcement came. 
and eventually the station, the police station was taken over. Four police officers were killed. On March 2nd, gangs attacked Haiti's two largest prisons, freeing over 3,000 inmates, many of them gang leaders. Let that sink for a minute. What has the toll been on the Haitian people? The UN reports that over 5,000 Haitians have been killed by gang violence in 2023. More than has been killed in Ukraine. Let that sink for a minute. 15,000 Haitians have been displaced by violence in just the past week. At least 300,000 have been displaced previously, before the current crisis. Now, what are we asking? Why are we here? What are we asking of the U.S. government and our so-called friends? For weeks and months, we've been asking for these things. We sent letters. We worked with members of Congress as a bipartisan approach to send letters. Republicans and Democrats send letters to ask those things. Number one, that the U.S. stop propping the corrupt, repressive government of Ariel Henry. Haitians have been meeting for years to develop a consensus-based plan to return Haiti to democracy. But these plans have been boycotted or vetoed by the U.S. and the core group, which includes Canada, France, Germany, Spain, OAS, Organization of American States, the United Nations, and Brazil. And they also call themselves our friends, by the way. Number two, stop all efforts to intervene in Haiti. Let me be clear, let me be clear here. The Haitian people have not asked for foreign intervention. What the Haitian people have asked is for security, for the heavy weapons that have been going to Haiti to stop, and 90% of these heavy weapons, war weapons, that have fallen in the arms of, of gang members as young as 13, 14 years old, come from right here in Florida. So we've asked the Biden administration to stop the flow of heavy weapons. And this ask has been made for those of you who were in a meeting the last two times that Secretary Mayorkas came to Little Haiti. Twice we've asked. Three years ago, 18 months ago, he promised to uh, 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 get President Biden to do it. And yet, the, 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 the gangs are armed while the national police are being killed because they don't have, even have the basic ammunition to protect themselves and to protect the population. The U.S. needs to do more to stop the flow of guns and ammunition to Haiti and stop all efforts all efforts to bring U.S. intervention from Kenya, a country that has its own human rights problems, that have, uh, that have been expelled from Congo recently because of grave human rights abuse over the population of Congo, attacks over on women, on journalists, and uh, they have their own medical crisis, Ebola, Cholera have, have, are diseases that have been endem that are endemic there, and then this is the country and others in the Caribbean, like Nassau, Bahamas, Jamaica, countries that have their own gang problems. Western Haiti, they all want to go to Haiti. We need that stop. The Haitian people have not asked for any intervention because past interventions for 1915 to now have contributed to the state. Uh, 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 that we are, that Haiti is in now. Lastly, now two, two more things. Reinforce the national police. You see, the gangs have the heavy weapons. The police have, they don't even have vests to protect them. To protect them, that is unacceptable. And lastly, the United States of America 
needs to listen to Haitian Americans in Miami-Dade County and around the nation. We know the conditions there from our own experience and regular reports from friends and family there and meetings with the civil society there. When the National Haitian American Elected Officials Network speaks, just like we did when we sent a letter to President Biden on September 22nd, a letter that has yet to be answered, we need an answer and they need to listen to us. They need to engage us. It is time that they stop making decisions about us without us. It is time. It is time. So I've been uh, neon and the different organizations and so many of them here today, and Vanessa will mention them, and many of them will be speaking soon. Many of them will be will, will been speaking soon. We 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 are reaching out to more. We are reaching out to other organizations. We've been working with Faith in Action locally and nationally. We reached out to the NAACP and we're going to be in communication with them to meet with the national branch of the NAACP. We're going to be reaching out to allies because enough is enough. Our people have suffered too much. We need a Haiti that is strong, that is resilient, a Haiti that is safe, where its people can live free of fear and raise their children in peace and harmony. Thank you for your presence today. And at this time, I'd like to welcome any North Miami Council members who will be speaking, and specifically for remarks, Mayor Alex Desome. Thank you so much, Madam Clerk, Commissioner Bastion. I know we have a long list of, of speakers today. It's saddened me to stand here with my colleagues from across the county as we are deeply concerned by the current situation in Haiti, which was outlined by Commissioner Malin Bassin. Thousands of people are displaced. Last week we heard of the gang attack that left the capital and most of the essential prison release of thousands of inmates. Yet the country's airport is under siege. We continue to see this time after time and we could go on and on. Today, we are standing in unifying voice, together, pleading, asking the Biden-Harris administration to stop supporting the de facto govern government of Haiti, Ariel Henry. The ask is very direct, is very simple. But we want to repeat it again. We are asking the Biden administration the Biden-Harris administration to stop supporting the de facto government of Ariel Henry. And we are looking forward to sit down and have a fruitful conversation with the Biden administration, along with the State Department, with the other Haitian American elected officials. Thank you. And now I'd like to welcome representatives of the NAACP. So we have the President, uh, Daniela Pierre, and of course, Harold Ford of the South Dade Branch. As the nation's oldest and boldest civil rights organization, serving since 1909, we continue to address immigration policies, and the protection and expansion of civil rights and human rights for all communities of color. As an association, the NAACP affirms our commitment to Haiti. As the second oldest republic, we firmly believe that Haiti continues to be a source of hope for all African Americans. For far too long, the Haitian community, our brothers and sisters, have endured the mistreatment at the hands of the nation. The Biden administration must do more, must be more intentional 
about the safety, the well-being, and the future of Haiti. By doing so, by a coordinated effort to reboot the U.S. policies as we approach the future of Haiti. Policies that are more humane, equitable, and keep the people safe. We stand together as the local branches of the NAACP. We stand with the people of the Haitian community. We stand with our brothers and sisters saying enough is enough. This is the time for action, intentional action for all the people of Haiti. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and my name is uh, Ud Delamo. I am with the, I'm the president of the Haitian American Democratic Club of Miami-Dade County. Uh, from 1957 to now, our motherland, our beloved Haiti, has gone from crisis to crisis. And a major reason, it's not the only reason, but a major reason why we have not been able to break that cycle of crisis is the fact that whenever we are facing those crises, the solution that has been imposed on the people of Haiti is an American solution. In 1957, they gave us François Duvalier. In 1971, they gave us Jean-Claude Duvalier. In 2004, they gave us La Tortue. In 2011, they gave us Matéli. In 2016, they gave us Jovenel Moïse. And in July 2022, 21, they gave, they gave us the actual, the illegitimate Ariel government. And during all this time, what the people of Haiti face is violence, corruption, and human, human rights violation. Today, we believe if we are going to solve this crisis today, it must be a Haitian solution. And as such, today, we demand that the Biden administration withdraw its support to the illegitimate Ariel government. Today, we demand that the people of Haiti choose their own leaders. Leaders that are capable, that are honest, that are able to lead the nation. And first and foremost, we need leaders that would listen first and foremost to the people of Haiti. Today again, the solution must be Haitian. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, for, uh, remarks from the Haitian American Democratic Club of Broward, led by Wynal Sulin. Hey, good afternoon. Hey, I'm tired. I'm frustrated. I'm outraged. See, you guys don't understand. Our several heart, and they are conflicting with each other. As an immigration lawyer, I have first hand knowledge of the atrocities, the abuse, the rape, and the killing of our people. As the president of Haitian American Democratic Club, where first, be, as a minister, I'm tired of praying for people going through all those hurdles when actually we can actually get as empowered us with the weapon to solve problems, to come up with solutions. As the president of Haitian American Democratic Club, I'm running out of argument and justification 
to continue to give a helping hand to this administration that continue to show deaf ears to the plight of our people. We have written to them. We have reached out to them. We say Ariel is not the man. Ariel must go. Yet he remains in power while our people are dying and being taken away from their home and being killed. Let's say they gang against us. The people on the street gang against us. The politicians in Haiti gang against us. The business class gang against us. In the international community, they are on the top of it to gang against us. It's about time we take matters into our hand and decide the fate of our country. The citizens of Haiti, the children of Haiti, let's do it. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. From Florida Immigrant Coalition, Flick Disaputi. Followed by a representative of VAU and a Florida Rising, led by Dwight Bullard. Hello, everyone. For decades, the United States has pretended that it was able to rule Haiti, and they have failed years after years, decades after decades. And as an immigrant advocate, I can tell you that the biggest frustration comes from seeing the amount of Haitians who have had to flee their home country. In the, in the 11 months in 2023, 200,000 Haitians entered the United States. That is not normal. It is time for the United States to recognize that they have failed at trying to rule Haiti the American way. It is time for the United States to recognize that Haitians have the right and the power and the knowledge and the will to fix their own country. It is time for the United States to listen to what we have to say and follow our lead. If migration is such a crisis in the United States, let's deal with the root causes of it. And the root cause is their involvement in the way we run our country. Let us be, let us do what we know we need to do. Give Haitians the chance to show without interference what we can do for our home country. Every Haitian life is as valuable as an American life. We have lost way too many of them. It's time for a decision to be made where space is made for us as Haitians to make the change and build the country that we want for ourselves. Thank you. Dwight Billard on behalf of Florida Rising. Good afternoon. Uh, I can't begin comments without first saying that there is no United States without the people of Haiti. Let me say that for the people in the back who believe that black history shouldn't be taught in schools. There is no United States without the people of Haiti. That is unequivocal fact, despite what people try to keep from you. Florida Rising is the state's largest independent political organization. We affirm and believe in the concept of justice on every block. Can you say justice on every block? Justice on every block. We believe that that extends beyond the shores of just Florida, that everyone, especially the most marginalized communities, deserve justice on every block. But understand what has been said over and over and over again. Folks are tired of American intervention, imperialistic, colonial intervention on the people of Haiti and are affirming today that the solutions for Haiti sit with the people of Haiti. Let me say that again. The solutions for Haiti sit with the people of Haiti. 
not an American-driven solution, not an imperialistic solution, not a colonial solution, not a solution that sows the seeds of chaos that have been sown since 1804 by intervention in government abroad. But let's be clear about where America can intervene because I don't want to be glossed over and I'll get out the way. The Coast Guard, the Navy, need to stop the flow of illegal guns from this country to that country. What is said in the first statement is that the weapons of war that are finding their way into Port-au-Prince are coming from right here in our backyard. And if folks are going to intervene, intervene on our side, making sure that the American shores do not send AK-47s, AR-15s, grenades and missiles to the wrong people in Haiti and allow the liberation of the Haitian people to prosper. Not just the peace, but we believe in liberation of Haiti. Thank you. Bonsoir, good afternoon everyone. Okay, my name is Tony Jatino and I'm from VAO. We are a group of action. Just last week, my uncle went to visit his ailing mother. Now, he's on the head of a kidnapper in Haiti, supported by the US Department. This is an election year. As a group of action, I'm asking you all to go out there and repeat the message. The message is, what's happening last week in Michigan, we need to repeat that here. Can we take, can we take, put a note, take a note, we're going to repeat what's happening in Michigan last week if we don't see any action. Whatever happened in Haiti right now, we know it is the U.S. State Department that is in behalf of it. He's pushing, he's dealing, he's keeping every bad people you see in Haiti. The government in Haiti right now is, has been supported and still, is still receiving support from the U.S. State Department to keep and doing and killing and killing and killing and killing so many people in Haiti. Our friends got no place to sleep. Children cannot go to school. Nobody can live in their own home. You cannot travel any place in Haiti because of the gang. Who got the gang? The gang has been supported by a regime installed by the U.S. State Department. And the U.S. State Department always said, this is our guy, this is the type of people you want to, you, they want to lead Haiti. So we are tired of it. Our family has been kidnapped. Our family is in jail in Haiti right now. We are tired of it, we need to take action. And our action is supposed to be what's happening in Michigan last week. Thank you very much. Monsignor Bazin. Followed by Gypsy Metellus of Saint Lang. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. And on February 7, 1986, Jean Claude Duvalier had to flee Haiti. But the next day, we were not ready in Haiti to put something in the place of Jean-Claude Duvalier and the regime. Right now, it is urgent. We don't know what will happen tomorrow, or the day after, or by this weekend. It's important in my invitation, my exhortation, is for all of us, especially those in leadership position, Asians, Asian Americans, in spite of the diversity of analysis and solution. We have to stand united on a minimum that is really rooted in a Haitian-led solution. That's my exhortation. We can help, we can encourage our sisters and brothers in Haiti because after all, that 
solution must come from them down there in Haiti. And we would stand and back them. May God bless Haiti. Gypsy Metellus of St. La, Executive Director of St. La, and to close us out, we will welcome again Commissioner Marlene Bastien. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Bonsoir tout le monde. Good afternoon, everyone. I think we've heard it all. All of the messages, the key messages, have been echoed. But what's important to remind you at this time, and my turn, is that we have to stand up for the people in Haiti who cannot stand for themselves right now, for the people in Haiti who are under fire, for the people in Haiti who are running for their lives, for the people in Haiti who feel hopeless, who feel helpless, who feel forgotten, who feel misunderstood. So it's on us to stand up for them. It's on us to stand up for one another. It's on us to continue to echo this message that a strong Haiti begins and ends with the Haitian solution. A prosperous Haiti begins and ends with the Haitian solution. A sustainable, peaceful Haiti begins and ends with the Haitian solution. And so if we're gonna remember two key messages today, we're gonna remember that it wouldn't be about us without us, right? And so for the people in Haiti, they are the ones under fire. They are the ones running for their lives. And so when they say, we will not flee, we will remain here and fight for our homeland, we've got to give them a whole lot of credit. And so with that credit comes an opportunity for them to shape their futures, to build their futures, to say what it is they want, what vision they have for a new Haiti. And so we stand with them, we stand for them, we echo their call for a Haitian-led solution, we echo their call for our friends to leave us alone. We echo our call, their call for our friends, or our so-called friends, to leave us the hell alone. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to acknowledge the elected officials who are present with us today. We have Commissioner Marlon Bastien of Miami-Dade County, District 2. And the North Miami Council Mayor Alex Desume, Councilman Scott Galvin, Councilwoman Cassandra Timothy, Councilman Pierre French Charles, North Miami Beach Councilwoman Daniela Jean, and North Miami Beach Commissioner, excuse me, uh, Michael Joseph. You know, a, a lot has been said for the general public, but one thing is that this generation of leadership is the generation that has still the opportunity to do something about Haiti. And so to my peers, to, to folks who may not have been born in Haiti, this, we are still part of the Haitian nation. The collective group of people who, regardless of where you are, we still have a duty to a homeland that gave us everything that we are. And so now is not the time to give up. Now is not the time to put your hands up and say that Haiti is gone, because in fact it is not. But now is the time to come together in the same ways that we come together. Every May 18th and we celebrate, we've got flags on us head to toe. Now is the time to wear that flag on your back. To remember where you came from, where your ancestors came from. And now is the time to stand collectively for Haiti. And it's not us to do alone. We must stand in solidarity with everyone who loves that island nation. And so we thank groups like the NAACP, Florida Rising, the Circle of Brotherhood. Because what harm they do to one black person is harm to all of us. And so now more than ever, I ask us to stand in solidarity with the people of Haiti. Whether or not your parents or your birth certificate says Haiti, because there has to be a Haiti. 
There has to be a Haiti for us to go back to. There has to be a Haiti for Abigail to go back to, for Angelina to go back to. There has to be a Haiti for all of us because we are because of Haiti. And so to close us out, Commissioner Marlene Bastien. Thank you so much. We're going to open for your questions, uh, uh, if you have um, any. Um, Dame dit quelques mots en créole pour ne pas ici en captandé. Euh, non là, ensemble, en, euh, officiel élu aux États-Unis, dans Miami, euh, groupe qui représente différentes orga or, organisations professionnelles, qui là pour mettre des voix ensemble, pour dénoncer la situation de crise qui est en Haïti. En plus, le monde pense que c'est une situation que les médias américains a annoncé. C'est comme si on levait et on voyait Haïti. Haïti a brûlé. Alors que depuis plusieurs années, là, par exemple, depuis passé uh, uh, cinq ans, là, côté paysan, vraiment, non, État, côté uh, peuple haïtien, pas qu'à vivre. Peuple haïtien, on vient de tous les réfugiés, là, caillots. Des milliers de monde obligés de quitter caillots. Il y a tellement de grands goûts. Et bien, mon yo, mon yo, c est, c est, si on mange matin, on connaît, c'est demain matin, ou bien dans deux jours, encore pas. Il n'y a qu'à manger. Plus passé 5 000 personnes mourir en Haïti, plus de personnes en Haïti l'année passée, en 2023, que uh, uh, en Ukraine. Et pendant que nous-mêmes, officiels élus avec différents groupes professionnels, vous voyez l'aide du président Biden, même congrès, vous voyez l'aide du président Biden avec le département d'État pour demander, li, pour suspendre, supporter les criminels, les compétences, les gens corrompus, les gens qui ont Haïti, pour bailler Haïti en chance. Et Nyon, qui est l'association officielle élue aux États-Unis, ils font l'aide du président Biden avec le département d'État. Le 22 septembre, je ne répondre non. Vous entendez Je ne vais pas répondre non. 90% des Haïtiens votent démocrate. Alors, donc, il y a pris décision pour voyer tout dans le pays nous et nous connaissons si le pays d'Haïti dans l'État aujourd'hui, c'est à cause de troupes qui ont sorti tout partout, qui ont porté maladie pour nous, pour, pour nous, en, en, en grosser les femmes, la gueule de ce papa dans les Donc, aujourd'hui, là, nous là pour nous dire, peuple haïtien, nous sommes avant, nous sommes avec nous. Nous avons besoin de quatre bagages des États-Unis. Premièrement, suspendre le flot d'armes qui dans le pays. Deuxièmement, nous avons besoin d'intervention. Nous n'avons pas besoin d'intervention dans le pays. Il y a 30 organisations en Haïti qui mettent tête ensemble, qui prennent des décisions pour jouer une solution pour comment le pays doit gérer. Eh bien, les États-Unis vont écouter les menaces pour les États-Unis pour tendre voir le peuple haïtien. Le peuple haïtien n'a pas besoin d'intervention. Le peuple haïtien a besoin de sécurité. Le peuple haïtien a besoin de vivre. Le peuple haïtien a besoin de lever le petit dans la sécurité. Il a besoin de travail. Il y a besoin d'accès à la santé et il y a besoin de justice. Nous avons besoin de suspendre les gros âmes, la guerre qui a transporté Haïti. 90% des âmes sont sortis là, dans la Floride. Et puis, il y a besoin de suspendre le support et by de facto Ariel Henry. Vous pouvez me dire tout, messieurs, dames? Donc, nous avons dit, peuple haïtien, nous là avec nous, nous campions avec nous, restez solidaires, nous continuons la bataille jusqu'à ce que, eh bien, nous gagnons en Haïti qui est libre, nous gagnons en Haïti qui est strong, nous gagnons en Haïti qui est peuple. Petit lit, pas obligé à prendre un bateau pour venir dans le pays d'Haïti et pour prendre un monde dans le même monde tout partout. Voilà, donc, madame, monsieur, nous en direct sur BPX TV Réseau, côté nous dans Mouka Plaza. Mouka Plaza, côté, il y a un ensemble de leaders qui viennent dans la communauté, donc toutes sortes de leaders politiques, civiques, leaders qui sont dans tout domaine, donc rassemblés pour faire une conférence de presse, côté, ils ont convoqué la presse, côté, toute presse, en pile presse là, presse étrangère, et BPX TV Réseau, qui c'est unique presse haïtienne, donc qui est là, côté, en pile vraiment. En pile, en pile, dans le leader, tu as Marlène Bastien, Gypsy Metellus, Dr. Suret, Pierre Franchard, et puis magistrat Alex Desulmé, Cassandra Timothée. Donc, ensemble des leaders, ça, qui est présent pour capable de venir revendiquer, venir protester contre la situation inacceptable. Donc, qui vraiment a passé en Haïti Ils font un exemple de l'étalage, côté, ils disent, il pas possible. Pour ça qui a passé à Haïti, nous avons fait un levé campé. Nous avons constaté un pile de Timoun avec un pile, un pile de slogan, un pile de pancarte, un pile de Timoun qui a ma compagnie de Hand the Violence, qui était Haïti vive. Um, um, so, c'est tout le slogan, ça a self-determination for Haitians. Donc, c'est tout le slogan, ça a qui est présent dans 
pancarte qui est vraiment son bagage extraordinaire, même si nous n'avons pas en grand nombre, mais le message ou encore l'activité est concret. Nous avons parlé avec deux trois membres organisateurs, nous avons regardé et comment nous sommes capables de permettre que deux trois répondre aux questions pour expliquer dans quel contexte ça fait gros activité ça parce que en plus nous toujours dit il est important les nafs activité yo pour ne pas quitter c'est que moi pour ne pas crier contre c'est que là donc est-ce que pas pi bon selon paquet monde si nous t'es allé devant un gros building un gros administration américaine Sony à nous permettre que mon yo quatre ans de et petite entrevue ça ne va le faire à des trois acteurs organisateurs qui ont fait un zipre ça à nous aller pour ne pas pas à joindre deux trois autres bois Sony BPX TV réseau BPX TV toujours supporter nous que la communauté a vraiment enjoy. Merci. BPX News. BPX TV réseau à toute réseau lio interconnecté à travers mon plan. BPX News. BPX TV réseau. Yo équipe reporter présentateur on est qui mounioye plan avec vision yo pour communauté à un seul réseau une seule équipe. BPX TV réseau référence.